Man, Crazy. this is they call this the Michigan wave when you're like Ooh. trying to <laughs> trying to get rid of these. Hi, baby bonus. Are you ready to go upside? Yeah? So now they need water. Oh, the lane is dirty. Better? You can see you can see me better. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about creativity on the farm. So I have this obnoxious need to push harder than anybody needs to push. Well, that thing looks scary. <laughs> Hopefully the final day for tomato planting. Yeah. Well, at least these two rows. We still have to do the outer row, but that'll be quicker. It's small pots. These were big pots. <laughs> Next year, we're definitely doing things differently. You cannot, on these small farms, spend this much time on one project nope. this time of year. You're just too busy. Tomatoes should be a... I mean, anything else in two rows, Jose and I can do in, you know, a, an hour or two. This takes forever. <laughs> so it can't happen next year. Next year, we need a better plan. Yeah, Don't we need think? a bit of ideas. Yeah. And the good news is next week, Betsy will be back. So mm -hmm. she'll be able to take back over uh, control of the greenhouse so I can focus on other things. Okay, so I wanted to talk briefly about what we're doing here planting tomatoes. So we've dug this trench, which is not our normal method. We're trying something different. Uh, so I'm just cleaning out the bottom. So what happened is this is where we stopped last night. And Jose, because we've got you know, two days worth of tomatoes in here, he really wanted to water. So he, in, uh, in addition to watering these tomatoes, he also watered the trench. And that'll help to ensure there's a lot of water down in here as we transplant these tomatoes. So it worked out nice when he did that. So now what we're doing is we've put some, uh, as you can see, we put some eggshell down in here. Not a lot, just to help the calcium levels. And then we're gonna get a rope. So Jose's working that side of the trench, I'm working this side of the trench. So we get a rope and we tie a little knot in the end of it like that. And then we're gonna lay it in the bottom of the trench. I like to have the soil fairly uh, wet to be transplanting because it gives these plants just a little bit more time with extra water so they're very well watered and then we're going to put them in the trench and then I just kind of eyeball nine inches we're putting them nine inches apart uh, but after the first day I pretty much have it down to a science where nine inches is so we're going to go ahead I will break off some of these smaller branches you could have a little uh, tool with you and then to make Trellising easier, Jose wraps the plant immediately. Get rid of this big sucker here. <laughs> okay, so then that part's done. So this will just need to get tied up in a minute when we're done. And then Jose's going to dump 301 in the trench quite a bit. This is just to help that tomato plant get a good start. And then I'm going to backfill on top of that with the native soil. Okay, then we're ready for the next one. So Jose will do the same thing again. This variety here is called Moskvik. It's a heirloom red slicer and it is a beautiful tomato. Uh, my neighbor introduced me to it, and it has since then been one of our favorites uh, to grow for market. It produces very well. It's a little bit more unwieldy than some of our other tomato varieties. It tends to bush out a little bit more. But it produces some of the best tasting, good looking tomatoes for market. And first year, we didn't do very well with tomatoes. It was kind of, the Moskvik was our saving grace. It, you know, we just tried planting some because my neighbor said to, and it was the only reds that really produced very well. Sometimes, you know, you gotta listen to the people around you. 
and now we grow it every year and I recommend it to a lot of our customers that buy starts if they're looking for a good heirloom slicer. All right. Next. Next. The other thing we're going to try and do that's different this year is we are going to put grass clippings down the walkways in here to really try to hold the moisture in and provide nutrients mm -hmm. to the soil. So we're going to use it as a mulch. So tonight, if I have time or in the next couple of days, we've got, we've been saving the mowing down in the apple orchard uh, to bring grass up here and put grass down. We'll see. Everything when you're farming is always trial and error, trial and error. Because what works in one area may not work so well in your area. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to kind of learn on your own what's, what works. Last year I planted with kelp meal, uh, oyster shells, and rock phosphate. We tried that and mm -hmm. we had pretty good luck. Mm -hmm. I think we could have done that again this year, but because I'm putting the potting mix in, I think that might be enough. I guess we'll see what happens. Okay, you can move the camera now if you want to. Excuse me. All right, Jose. It is, I, the mosquitoes are hungry this morning. Isn't that what you said? They need breakfast? Then maybe you should stand still and let them have breakfast. Oh. Okay. Wow. Whenever Jose comes in off pasture, he like brings a cloud of mosquitoes with him. <laughs> yeah, it's, we're, it's crazy town around here right now. Hopefully though, this dry, hot weather, eventually they'll be gone. Yeah. But we had so much moisture, they're, they're everywhere. Everybody's been saying it. Uh, and the problem is it's so hot during the day you, it, and then the mosquitoes are so bad at night you have to either work in the heat of the day or suffer in the mosquitoes at night. So, oh, it's brutal. All right, what, what are you up to this morning? All right, uh, the rabbits, they need to go outside. Mama rabbit with the babies. Yeah, the moms and babies are, the babies are five weeks now and that's when we put them on pasture. So it's time. Yep. They need to go out. So what happened last night? Oh, we lost uh, our, another rabbit. Yeah, we lost another mom in labor. That's two back to back, uh, last breeding and this breeding. Really disappointing. I never in all of my rabbit breeding have I lost moms that were pregnant or in labor. I've never had a problem. And this year we've had two. It's been a rough rabbit breeding season. Yeah. So Jose and I had a long talk this morning because I just feel like we're not maybe doing as right by the rabbits as we could be doing. You know, I'd, I'm not big on like forcing production. I would rather have, don't hit me. Oh, <laughs> I would rather have healthy, well cared for livestock than I care about production. And I just feel like we're not doing something as probably correctly as we could be doing. So we talked about, we don't have time right this time of year, but mm -hmm. this fall, we're gonna really redesign what we're doing with the rabbits, if we're gonna continue to keep them because you know, I, I've been raising rabbits for a long time and I just have always wanted to do a setup where, you know, they're, they have more ability to be down on the ground and be more natural. Yeah. Uh, and so I think we want to start focusing on figuring out how we can do that, um, you know, and still raise rabbits. Yeah. They're not like chickens. Chickens stay around. Rabbits, you know, they, yeah. they, they need some sort of level of enclosure. Um, so we're going to start working and thinking about how we can run and do this better. Yeah, something better. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's, so then also today's harvest day. It's mm -hmm. Friday this May, oh, wow, there I go with the May. It's Friday, June 2nd. Um, and so we have to harvest today, but luckily harvest is small. Well, not luckily, but it is small. We just don't have very much. So lettuces, kale, spinach, uh, green onions. Mm -hmm. What else? Uh, radishes, I think. Oh yeah, we might have some baby radishes. Uh -huh. And radishes are usually the earliest, quickest crop on the farm. We literally planted our first round of radishes yeah. before the storm on May 1st. And we still don't have radishes to harvest. <laughs> uh, that is probably five to six weeks. Usually radishes are ready three to four weeks and you're you know, harvesting and taking to market. But not here, nope, we are still waiting, man. This is, they call this the Michigan wave when you're like, 
trying to get, <laughs> trying to get rid of these. All right, so uh, what, oh, one last thing we have to do today is those big tomatoes need to go in the ground. Um, we got almost all the tomatoes planted yesterday, but we ran out of room in that row. Yeah. So we, Jose had to put up a new trellis, so we took, took a break. You breathe. <laughs> she's biting at the mosquitoes. I think she's done. I'm sorry, you breathe. Yeah, it's bad out here, huh, buddy? Uh, so we got to get that last row of tomatoes uh, started, and then I have to plant today. Like, I am behind because Betsy's been out of town. I have got to get in the <laughs> greenhouse and plant. <laughs> Otherwise, Betsy's going to be very mad at me when she shows up next week and nothing's done. And then I'm going to be mad in three weeks or four weeks when we have nothing to harvest because I didn't plant. So that's got to get done today. Anything else for you? Oh, I know. You're going to work the corn. Yeah, I uh, hope so. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, if we can get to it. Yeah. It's, uh, we, have, we started some corn and soil blocks that needs to go in, and then mm -hmm. you're going to direct seed the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully, and some beans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's, be it's going to be bean season. And who doesn't love bean season? Okay, well that's the schedule for today. You ready to get to work? I'm ready for... Oh my god, to get away from this. Okay, to work. Hi baby bonies. Are you ready to go upside uh, and explore a new, new thing, a new world? Hi babies. Hi babies. All right, Mama. I'll be right back for you, Mama. Come on, Mama. Go see your baby, Mama. Go see your baby. I know you miss your babies, huh? Hi, baby bonnies. Do you like your new place? I know you like, huh? There's a fresh grass, huh? All right. Have fun, have fun. Mama. So now they need water. Oh, the lane is dirty. It's better. You can see. You can see me better. <laughs> Probably not. Um, so yeah, they need water and uh, a little uh, extra food because they they um, they eat a lot. <laughs> so other thing I like to do in the morning is um, cut uh, or clip a little fresh grass and bring to bring inside to those um, to rub it the, the, those ones they are inside I think I have enough Right, let's go feed the rabbit. Probably I will be working here if uh, if I have time. If not, <laughs> it will be tomorrow. Hey, good morning, Christoph. Christoph. All right, Mama. Can you move a little bit, Mama? I know you wanna you wanna fresh grass, huh? <gasps> you help me, Evan. You wanna help me, Mr. Devin? Fresh cross for you, Mama. Okay, so today is 
uh, harvest day for Market Market. So that is always the first thing we get started on on Fridays. And today is a very short day. We should be done by lunch on harvest. There's just not that much stuff yet. But the first thing I always do is I come in here and I sanitize everything in here. So that's three mornings a week. This whole area gets cleaned and sanitized. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about creativity on the farm. So you are limited in the time of year that you can produce and make a living. So sometimes you got to get creative. And this year we had planted a bunch of onion starts for market and they did not sell very good. So our green onions won't be ready for another couple of weeks, but these onion starts are incredible. We started them back in March. So we've been cleaning them and banding them and taking them and selling them to our members at market. Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, so harvesting spinach is definitely labor intensive. It's all done by hand here. Um, so I individually cut all the leaves. It takes a long time. It's going to be even more labor intensive with the mosquitoes eating me alive. I may have to go inside and get my bug hat. Wait, what are we doing? I think this is the last of uh, tomato groups. Yeah, this is the last of the big tomatoes anyway. The rest are all small, so I can do them on my own. But Jose's been helping me out with these big guys. So we're putting in the last four right now. Woo -hoo! These ones are so big, Jose decided to dig a little bit extra into the trench because they're <laughs> way too big. So I have this obnoxious need to push harder than anybody needs to push. So Jose and I always end up having a crazy amount of work for two people. In the past, my MO used to be to quit. I would make huge goals, huge plans, and not follow through and quit. Jose, though, he's my implementer. And he's amazing, and he keeps me focused and going. The project that took us way longer than it should have is done. <laughs> it is completed now. Yeah, it's done. Tomatoes are in the ground, which means it's afternoon. It's time for uh, seeding. It's time for Jose to seed. Exactly. That's what we're going to do. I think we're going to be on break for 15 minutes and then I have to work in the greenhouse. Are you going to work on corn? Uh, the uh, new asparagus probably need water. We need water bad. We springs are never this dry up here. It is. I'm very worried because we haven't yet watered the asparagus we planted two weeks ago and I'm mm -hmm. afraid we may have already killed it. So Jose's going to get in there and get it watered and hopefully we haven't killed it. It is night weather, Saturday, uh, June 2nd, no, the 3rd, sorry. Um, um, and I'm working here in a new garden. All right, compost is in the garden. Now, fertilizer. So now it's time to running uh, the two-wheel tractor to mix the compost with the soil.
Somebody say, or people say it's, it's not sharp here in the uh, Lake Superior, uh, Superior Lake. It's not sharp in Superior Lake. No sharks? No, but this uh -huh. is looking for... Yeah, it looks like a big shark hook, huh? <laughs> wow. Look at that thing. Looks like some sort of a spike. Probably, wow. This know. is why we were worried about taking our tractor over all of this. Brutal. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, good luck. Be safe. Be safe out there, Jose. So these six beds here are our corn beds, and then we have uh, soybean and then uh, bean and then the rest of them will all be beans later in the season in this area. So on the corn we're putting down compost and a little bit of fertilizer. Last year we had some bad luck with the corn. I think it was less about how we were taking care of the soil and more about how little water uh, they were getting. We did not irrigate them last year. This year they'll be irrigated so that'll help. Plus we tried uh, doing in soil blocks these first two rows. So those when they go in will already be this tall. So probably knee high by the 4th of July. Been a heck of a week. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it has been hot. It has been dry. <laughs> you know, I said to somebody at the farmer's market today, if this had been my first season as a farmer, I may have quit. <laughs> because it's just been rough. Yeah. But now, so this week, all the corn's going to go in, all six rows. And then some soybeans and some beans. And it just feels like we're starting to get into a rhythm. We actually had vegetables for sale at market today. We had another great day, one of our largest days again. Not, didn't quite compete with last week, which was a banner day, uh, but it, it's still almost one of our largest days today. So, I mean, it just feels like we're in a good rhythm and things are going well. Yeah, and thank you, you people, for your support. Yeah, we appreciate everything, you know, you guys watching. We appreciate you coming by the booth and saying hi and buying vegetables. Yeah. Yeah, so things are good. So yeah, probably tomorrow we'll be, we'll be planting here because today is too late and the uh, mosquito, I think the ship starts right now. Yeah, the <laughs> mosquito ship starts around 6 p.m. So that means it's time for us to go put our bug hats on. But yeah, I think tomorrow we'll get some more planting done. And then this coming week, I mean, I, we've been saying these are our busiest couple of weeks. Next week is potatoes. Uh, all of our su uh, winter squash mm -hmm. needs to go in the ground. The Brussels sprouts need to go in the ground. Uh, just it's like lots and lots <laughs> of planting. The peppers need to go in the ground. Yeah. So we're going to be very busy. Luckily, uh, Betsy will be back this week. Jamie's coming to help a day. Yeah. That's our neighbor. And then we have friends coming hopefully on Sunday to help get some planting done because we still have to get the grapes and the raspberries in. We also need to water trees. We've never watered trees on this property, but I think we need to water some trees yeah it is uh it is about maybe two two or three weeks it's three weeks no yeah. rain yeah three weeks and it has been in the 80s high low to high 80s yeah it's, usually in this time of the year we we have a lot of rain huh? yeah we get rain and it's cool yeah like you get a few hot days here and there but not three weeks in a row of <laughs> hot weather yeah so anyway all right well, I got to get inside and get some work done. Jose is going to do chores. Yep, it's time. All right. All right. Back to work.